Here we are, here we are, here we are. Fashionably, fashionably late. <laughs> yeah, we're on summertime. We, I think we uh, started later last time too. Yeah, we did. And we still had one or two people show up. <laughs> I love it. Hey, everybody. It's uh, Dina and Carrie with their brand new show. We have a little talk show. Where are we going to talk? Surprise, no. surprise. So, <laughs> so we came up with this concept that we face a lot of different shifts in our lives. Some might be uh, positive or negative. Some are expected. Some are unexpected, maybe. But um, those are going to happen. It's just a given. So how we see them, how we process them, how we deal with them, how we walk through them is going to determine a lot of the outcome. And that's what we want to talk about is these type of shifts that we face and things that happen. And if we could just have a maybe step back, have a little perspective, throw a little humor at it, and also understand that we aren't alone, that there are a lot of people that are also experiencing these things. The other kind of shift that we want to talk about is the shifts that you would like to create, positive shifts in your life, in your family, in your environment, in your world. And how, you know, what are they? How can we make those happen? And sometimes it's a shift in our perspective and how we show up. So we are in our third episode and we have got, you know, unfiltered conversations because when you're talking like, you know, this is a real shift show and sometimes you know, we get carried away because it's just too fun not to. And we just can't help ourselves now. So we sometimes drop little little bombs that maybe little ears uh, shouldn't hear. So we're challenging ourselves today. And yeah. it's my turn to do intro today. So that's why I'm the one rambling on for a little while here. <laughs> we decided that today we were going to talk about our pet peeves. So Everybody who's watching, drop in the comments if you have a pet peeve you would like to share, and maybe we'll talk about that as well. But we want to talk about our pet peeves, and we thought, ooh, this might be a really good episode to challenge ourselves to do as a clean cut version instead of an unfiltered version and try and change our perspectives on some things that annoy us. Now, we're talking about little annoyances that aren't harmful. So those are the type of pet peeves we're talking about, not things like bullying or, you know, that kind of stuff. We're talking about something that might bug us that doesn't bug somebody else. And maybe it bugs a lot of people too. So we want to hear your comments. And if you're watching this on the replay, drop in the comments. Let us know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What is your perspective on some of our pet peeves? And what are some of your pet peeves? So welcome to the Shift Happens show with Carrie and Dina. And we will be coming every couple of weeks with a new episode and a new topic. Um, what we talked about last time was a little bit of, we wrapped up around the, the cowboy, the stampede, you know, kind of our perspectives on that. The cowboy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then Carrie, then what did we talk about? Oh my goodness. Um, what did we talk about? <laughs> oh, we, uh, well, I know we, okay, so you were explaining about the stampede, how, you know, you didn't really think it was just all that <laughs> in a bag of chips. I was like, yeah, okay, these, these are some of the, the valid things about the stampede. So that was good. Yeah. And then we talked about something else, which I totally don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> which this actually might become now one of my pet peeves because I, you know, because I meet so many people and I'm doing so many different shows, just like yourself, I actually think it does become a problem when you can't remember <laughs> what you're talking about. And it's a pet peeve that I get picked on because I'm like, oh, crap. I'm like, what did we talk about? So um, do you remember what we were talking about last show? Um, I do not. So see, there I, we go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember either. Um, I'm not the only one in, in this. Uh, but we did. We went through. Oh, we discussed <laughs> how to navigate something. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh my this God. is great. <laughs> I know. 
Well, no, you know, this is a pet peeve is that yeah, when you get a little up in years and wisdom and experience, your head is so full of knowledge and your head is so exactly. full. I used that... to, true story, true story. So growing up, um, I have two older stepbrothers and I have two older sisters. At one point, all of us, we were living together in one house, Brady Bunch, if you will. So my stepmom, I love her to pieces. She's so awesome. She's amazing. And I felt bad, but I used to bug her about like, she would go through all of our names to get to the person like, oh, yep. so-and-so can be like, can you with the face, you know, come here. And so as we advance in years, I have totally like, and I've apologized to her because I told her, I said the same thing. I said, I have now realized that as we do get older, this memory bank is so full that it's like, okay, we're trying to remember what we had for breakfast. We're trying to remember what yep. we said on our last podcast. We're trying <laughs> to remember what we're going to be doing tonight, what we're making for dinner, what we have to do tomorrow, what we have to do the next day, what we have to do a week from now and a year from now and a month from now. I literally have a planner that I'm writing down every single thing, who my guests are, everything, because it's like, again, just so much in the memory bank that I'm going, uh, right. So I have to, you know, when there's a conversation going on and it's somebody that I met from before, I just have to get like that little clue, the word clue. And I'm like, oh yeah, I remember who you are, where you're from, what we talked about. Yeah. Whatever. It's not like it's gone. It's not like it's not no, there. No, it's just, you just need a little nudge. <laughs> it's just maybe not a priority at that. Remember when you got time. to poke people on Facebook all the time? This is, we just need that gentle poke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember what we did? Okay. Oh, yeah. So we want to talk about pet peeves and, um, oh, did, I forgot to tell you, I'm on, I'm in Alberta right now, but I'm on Manitoba time. There may or may not be a oh. little Malibu in here. Go. Oh. <laughs> there may or may not just be water in here. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do you want to share a pet peeve first? And we'll just kind of, you share, I'll share, we'll kind of discuss okay. these. Well, I just went back to our LinkedIn post. And the last time we, when we were on, we were talking about summer and summer plans. Right, Our summer plans, our summer wish list. Exactly. And that's why I think, because I've actually been fulfilling my summer wish list. I went paddle boarding. I bought a paddle board a year ago. And I was like, I really want to go paddle boarding. This is on my to do list. And I never got around to it. So finally, I got I went and I went on Monday. And the following Monday, I went rafting on the bow with one of my friends as well. So I, I did my water sports for the summer. And we're going to try <laughs> and go again. Because I'm like, once the summer is not good enough. And I realized um as a newbie paddler that it's actually much harder than it looks <laughs> yes Just putting it out there so most of the time it was like on my knees and then sitting with like you know the legs over the sides and and paddling and both the paddling wasn't the issue that wasn't like very hard and navigating in the water wasn't very hard at all but standing up and yeah. my legs are like I'm like shaking like this and so like for real it, it was hard because I think because I had my accident in January um I still don't have that muscular um strength in my legs like I have to get back to the gym and I have to be doing way more work than I realize like I'm thinking I'm slacking off but and I'm such a physical person as it is but now I'm just like holy cow I I've lost a lot of muscle in my legs than I've than I've really known. So, but yay summer. <laughs> yay. Yeah. So, so there's our reminder. That's what we did. That's so, what we did. Yes. Um, shall we go? I'm doing into pretty, these? yeah, I'm doing or pretty do good wanna, with my, my summer. summer wish list too. Okay. Um, I was going to read two. Reading. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things I have big list. <laughs> oh, but I did, uh, I did read a couple of fun books and good well into the third and so combined i've read about this many thickness that thick that, that many thickness. pieces of books good yeah, out of three books so i'm doing good with that trying to take some more downtime 
I booked yeah. a second massage. I, I've had two massages this month. Usually I don't even have one, but wow. I had two. So that was a self-care kind of thing. So yeah, doing good with my summer. All right. Pet peeves. So do you want to, do you want to start with one? Pet peeves. Okay. My biggest pet peeve. <laughs> Actually, no, I have a couple and it's probably one very super duper relatable and one very relatable to content creators. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So one super duper relatable is like bad drivers. I, I can't right but now. Define, <laughs> define bad, define bad. Cause define it's different bad. for all of us. True. That's true. Some people cut you off. Some people swear. Some people road rage. Some people are, some people like, hate leaders. Some they don't put your signal on whatever. Yeah. Um, lately it's just been the, Oh, they're in front of you and they decide to go one way, but they don't actually go over. Or it's like I was at a turning light to go turn and no, wait, I was in um, an intersection and there was a guy beside me who was in the turning lane. He was going to turn, but decides to go straight in front of me. And I was like, hello, <laughs> that's happened twice. Just this summer, that's happened twice. And I was like, you know, I'm ready to say some words. But um, for me, I'm actually not like a, a road rager type of a person, whatever, but it's so dangerous. And I'm just like, look ahead of time of where you're going, because this could be a potential hazard. Like it, it is a hazard to do yeah. that. So just like there, the indecisiveness, I think is what a huge pet peeve is. It's just like, okay, know your route, know where you're going. I understand some people are you know, they're traveling there from out of town or whatever. But if you're like an Alberta plate, I'm going to think that you're from here. And I'm just going to be like, no holds bar. And I don't want to I'm clean cut. Okay, I'm just So are you a are you a honker, Carrie? I want to know if you're a honker. I'm not an aggressive honker. I'm not oh, there's there's you can honk without being aggressive. Like one honk is okay. But it's like three, a three is aggressive. <laughs> 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 or you hold the long beep and that's i'm like, just like a beep <laughs> oh, okay. excuse me like i, I never hello. think to use it like i've had people come like up last up second just, sometimes i'm like and, oh, up. and then you know the <laughs> moment where it's like you try and honk and it doesn't work and you're like yeah <laughs> that's more frustrating <laughs> yeah <laughs> why is this not working and then you become a dangerous driver because you're like <laughs> looking at your horn like well where is i where am i supposed to push <laughs> we need to practice honking with <laughs> aggressive situations we really should go out with your friends and pretend like you're honking at each other <laughs> yeah in a yeah. field or something i don't know <laughs> yeah but so that to me is one of my biggest pet peeves is just like you know they just or i've had it where like i'm going deerfoot south and there's a part where um, it goes into like a shopping center. So you have to, if you are, there's like six lanes. So you have to kind of make sure you're merging over. If you are in the far, furthest left lanes and you want to get over, go over slowly or whatever, you know, whatever to get over safely. I've had where I'm in kind of like the middle right lanes where I'm only having to go like only two lanes over. And I'm in that lane. Now, seriously, this has happened more than twice. This has happened a few times. I'm in that lane because I know I have to get over. And people are just like coming over. And I'm like, hello, like you don't see me. I'm I'm here. Like they just decide to come on over. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Welcome to my lane. <laughs> like, I did not invite you. There was no invitation in the mail. And they just decide just like I'm coming over and I'm like, I, I can't go anywhere. Like I'm, I'm just, just getting ready to get into another lane that I can just barely get over. But I'm like, I'm squished between me and the, this person. And then there's like a little bit of like a median and I'm like, eh, I'm not quite there yet. So you, you got to wait. <laughs> so It's fun. It's, it's, it keeps you on your toes. And um, I'm learning to breathe and, <laughs> and really, you know what it is, it's, it's keeping you on your toes. 
and it, you're like looking in advance. Like I'm always like looking in advance to where I need to turn and, and whatnot. And all the people around me, because as they say, you have to drive defensively and just you're, you know, you have to like drive for other people, right? As they say, you don't just drive yourself. You're driving and looking around everyone else that's around you going, okay, <clears throat> what could be their next move? They have their signal on like they're going to go left, but there's no lane there to go into. So, you know, whatever, you know, so you have to watch everywhere. Prepared way and, ahead of time. They're just signaling <clears throat> two miles early. Right. Let everybody know. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> do what you need to do. Okay. So I've, I think everyone's got a relatable driving pet peeve. I'm pretty sure. Plus yeah. there's the usual Deerfoot traffic and Glenmore traffic, but I have such a schedule where I kind of avoid that and I don't really need to do, to deal with it. But when I have to deal with rush hour traffic, I'm just like, well, one day out of a month is not a big deal. I'm like, you know, throw on some tunes and, you know, but I'm like, y'all can move just a little bit faster than. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Doing you know, two. You as fast as the person in front of you. And that gets frustrating. I walk through a mall the same way. Yeah. I'm just like. Voo, 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 voo. <laughs> Through the and, and the same ground. thing happens in a mall where people, and you mentioned this in one of the our grocery earlier store. conversations. Yeah, yeah, they just like, they stop, they're indecisive, it's like, pick up, ooh, that, it's clean cut. Oh, oh. Pick. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to lose? Pick, pick a lane. Pick go a, somewhere. Pick a side of your aisle, ma'am, yeah. because I need to go by you. Or they're parked right in front of where you need to get your item. <laughs> right? <laughs> Like, are How you going to pick an orange? You want two oranges? Let me help you bag those. Yeah. Can I just like deal with your kid later? Grab your fruit and move along. <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, talk about, look at your memes later on your phone and just move along. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure they don't do it intentionally, but it, it happens. Like I, oh, and I it, know it, that's happened a few times. And I'm, like, I'm sure we're not guilty of ever having done any of these things. Probably not. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So I have a list of pet peeves. Yeah. But and I'll share my other one after you share one. Okay. So I have two related to the bathroom. And I oh. know that I know there mm. that the jury is out on on these because I've I've just seen too many posts about it. So one is oh. toilet paper. How <laughs> do you hang your toilet paper on the roll? And the other one right is way. yeah, the right way <laughs> over the top. Are we on, are we agreeing? Oh my God. I knew we were best friends for a reason. Okay. Right. Over the top paper roll. Mm -hmm. And there's so many reasons why I've actually seen some where they have like this little, there's like a little metal cap on it. You can go put and that's, and yeah, so it's for ripping. So mm -hmm. even that proves that it should be over the top because you can't rip it if you're rolling from under the bottom. Okay. And the other thing is reading material in the bathroom. Mm. Oh my God. I there's so many, so there's so many things wrong with this. First, you're hogging the bathroom. Why mm -hmm. are you sitting so long at your reading? Now that piece of material, you've had your, you've been wiping places and then touching your reading. Like what? And now mm. you're going to leave it in there for some, like who wants to touch that? Who wants to yeah. know that you've been there? I'm sorry, but I can't handle that. Rip your page out that you used. <laughs> <laughs> they had to in the old days. They used the catalog, that shiny, glossy papers. Sometimes what they'd use for <clears throat> TP. It's like, whoa. It, maybe that's how it all began, right? Oh. Was the original <laughs> newspaper. In the, in the Sears paper. Wish book. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness, the wish book was like the best ever. It's oh. like the toy section was like this. And it's like you're in there just oh. And I remember oh. circling things. I'm like, mom, yep. this one, mom, this one, this one, this one, this one. And I'm like, this, you know, and that I don't never know got if old. I bought anything. I don't know. Even as an adult, that never got no. old. No, no. And I'm just like, it's oh. I don't think they have it anymore, do they? No, that was a sad time. Can we? And I grew up, I grew up plus raised a family in the boondocks. So yeah. Sears is where we got everything, our appliances, our clothes, like 
it was kind of like Amazon, but it took a week to get there. Do you remember consumers more. distributing yes. this magazine? Right? Almost yes. like the Sears wish book, but more, you know, practical. <laughs> yeah, and you had to go pick, you had to go get it. You know for what us it's week. like? It's like Amazon in a news in a catalog. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And now I'm on like Amazon going, ooh, <laughs> yeah. I can get this for my dangerous. paddle board and I can hey. get this for my paddle board and I get a pump and I can get this. And I'm like, I'm oh yeah, it's, so it's dangerous. This is totally not about pet peeves, but it reminds me okay. of something that I just heard that I found fascinating. Yeah. And I, it reminded me because on Amazon, we usually, we'll do our impulse shopping when we get bored or at night when we can't sleep and we pop on to look at something and then we whatever. And we get shopping late at night. So I recently heard, and there was a bit of question on how um, ethical this was. There was a company that was in the market, like trading stocks and that kind of thing. Right. And they had, I don't know if it was an app, what it was, but they had a way of tracking the people that were buying in those uh, they had 24 hour trading available on their app or something like that. And oh, so okay. when people could trade outside of when the market was open, mm -hmm. that meant that they were doing these impulse things. And it typically like the, it's such a high rate of failure that what they did is they looked at all the stuff, the people, if they were buying, mm -hmm. then these smart people mm -hmm. would sell. Mm -hmm. And if those people acting on impulse were selling, they would buy. And they were soup because those people were wrong. 90 some percent of the time because they were just kind of doing it by just on an impulse or they were bored or whatever yeah and the rate of failure was known to be so high that these people would do the opposite and have big profits interesting you want to talk about human nature and the study of you know making that work for you right right okay so your turn for another pet peeve oh my goodness oh, that was just so interesting i like that and, um okay <clears throat> going into leading off of what you said actually because it's kind of technological um as a content creator and you can probably relate and a lot of people that do youtube and streaming and all that stuff in fact a lot of people can relate when it was covid and they had to stay home and they had to do their zoom meetings and all that but technology can be such a <clears throat> fun time <laughs> <laughs> A nice shift. I saw that shift. <laughs> right. So um, when technology isn't working the greatest, <laughs> that's a pet peeve of mine because not only does um, it ruin a show, uh, but it's like it goes off your whole train of thought. It's like everything, right? So you're like, oh, I don't even know where we left off. Like, unfortunately, I had a guest on my show last week from Nigeria. And I know like it's really hard with their country because they don't have great Wi-Fi to begin with. And um, so we had, uh, you know, it was a little bit good and a little bit bad and, and patchy or whatever. So I was pretty much ready for that. But, you know, when you're in a country that has great Wi-Fi, like you're 5G, you're streaming like nothing. You can watch Netflix when you're online at the grocery store, you know, like it's not a problem. but like when it just doesn't work, oh my goodness. Or you go to upload something and it took you forever to just <laughs> create a reel or do the caption or, you know, like I was trying to put in my little ticker along the bottom here today and, and I hit like the wrong button and it, and it just wasn't ticking. And I was like, nah, okay. <laughs> You know, but you just this, patient. we're spoiled because <clears throat> remember yeah. dial up. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Oh, and now I'll have two browsers with a dozen tabs open on each and oh. I'm uploading on four or five of them and downloading on the other six and such a hard life. <laughs> it's just first world problem. I know. Oh, but I have I've got a couple techie pet peeves to add here, too. OK. And. Mine have to do because, with Zoom. Yeah, you I got have, your magazine have, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I well, the magazine, yeah, it's all digital. I've got a podcast and newsletters and online support groups are on Zoom. So for me, I'm on Zoom so much as many, many people are now, especially during the little blip we had in our, our world, you know, a couple of years ago where we 
ended up having to use Zoom for a lot of things because we couldn't yeah. be in person. Yeah. The two things that just annoy me is come on to technology, Zoom. Can you please catch up with the virtual backgrounds? Oh my goodness. I just what? edited, I just I just clean cut there. Did you notice? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um You're like... the virtual backgrounds. They're they're terrible. They're so clunky. And they're you know, one of these. Yeah. This is real. That's nice. Yes. <laughs> Anyone that watches you know, my you show? Know, and their face disappears or somebody walks by and you see some piece like of a this? person human and going then, by and yeah. they move and and Agreed. then there was this one uh thing you could do where you could add you could a friend of mine she you could add like color to your lips like it looked like you were wearing lipstick but if she moved her face too fast the lips would be on her cheek or I something like it was ridiculous and the other thing i hate is but those awkward fine. the other thing i hate that her pet peeve is those awkward zoom call ends so at the end everybody's like scrambling to hit the end button and then end meeting for all and it's just awkward as all get out like, as, bye. yeah bye yeah bye. bye and where's the out button and it's like oh my god oh oh my goodness and then you know it's so cute but that reminds me of like so older people that never use like facetime <laughs> and stuff like that and they're like how does then they're up close they're like how do we turn this <laughs> off <laughs> like where's that button <laughs> i'm but stuck so i'm stuck cute. in zoom i'm never gonna get out of zoom land ever <laughs> it's like hey janice how do i <laughs> Matilda. How, do I, how do i how do i turn this which button <laughs> it's so cute though and you're like oh and they're they just don't know right so i but that's kudos a that's a total kudos pass. for being and on it, there totally it's so cute and i love that grandparents can do that to see their grandkids that live far away. I think that's like the sweetest thing ever and the best thing about technology because I have to give technology some credit because it helps our businesses grow. So, you know. And we can do the FaceTime with mm -hmm. our grandkitties. Yeah, later in life, I can, whenever those come along. <laughs> I can already, I've got two cool little grandkitties. Okay, but your you turn. see them all the time though, right? They're over all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like, do you FaceTime with the grandkids and read them stories? Bedtime stories? Oh, I should, but I did you something don't? cooler. Well, not cooler. I didn't do something cooler. Okay. I do go on with them sometimes. And the yeah. youngest one who's three, he's <laughs> always requesting um, animals, animals, Oma. I'm Oma. Animals. Oh. So there's those little funny little animals you can do on FaceTime where it turns your, it covers your face with an animal mask that moves and you can stick your tongue out and all this. And one of his favorites is the poop emoji and it has, <laughs> has eyes and he's like do the poop do the poop anyways okay so what i did do, we should have used poop for this show <laughs> we still can we still so can like, oh that's cool you can send hearts. i have love to send out Aww, there. <laughs> i love that okay so what i did do last winter is i had this inspiration in the middle of the night and mm -hmm. i thought Oh, midnight and really fun. So I now have books with Oma. Mm -hmm. And I funny thing, I shared this during a business networking thing where they said, just like, make something up that you could maybe have as a business. And let's just all yeah. throw ideas, you know, and I said, Oh, okay, well, I just did this funny thing. Mm -hmm. I it's books with Oma, I record myself reading a book to the boys and I page through the book. Then I upload it unlisted on YouTube. Then I make a QR code and I put a sticker in the front of the book and I say, scan me and I mail it to them. So they, they, cause they can operate a phone. They can operate, they can do this. They can scan on a, on a camera. They pull That's this so up cute. and they can watch <laughs> it on their mom's phone when they're traveling or on an iPad or on the T, whatever they want to do. And I'm reading a book to them. So it's not live. It's recorded. Yeah. And it was hilarious because this, the, the ladies just ran with it and they're like, oh my God, that's the most amazing. You should do this as a business and you could create a course online to teach other grandmas how to do this. And and, and you, they could send you books and you could read it and then mail it to their kids. I'm like, oh, maybe yeah. that's where my or million. Or they could do it themselves. <laughs> or do it themselves, yeah. Like, wouldn't that be funny if that's voice? a million dollar idea that I just like, I'm whatever. So this, yeah. So then I send the first book out as a surprise. Well, a couple of days later, my daughter sends a picture and we were 
she had company, like her in-laws were there and her, her in-laws, which they're amazing. I love them. Yeah. They, they're sitting on the couch, her husband, kids, her, they're all sitting on the couch and they're all looking at the TV and there's me on a big full screen reading a book. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was like, cool. That's great. Awesome. I'm happy you all enjoy it. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. Your turn for a pet peeve. Oh my goodness. That's gold. <laughs> but right? think about it though. I mean, I, I, you know, cause they always say it's good to leave like a legacy or something for the kids a little later on and, and something, you know, that can be passed down generation to generation. So that's a fabulous idea. I mean, well, yeah, she sent pictures <clears throat> where um, the little guy, yeah. he's sound asleep on the couch and he's got a stack of these. He's, like he's falling asleep listening to me read a book. So yeah, that's yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah. Like your favorite person's voice. And and then, oh, and I love the fact that it's not necessarily a pet peeve, but like you can do that with your, um, the GPS on cars and stuff is you can change the voices. Yes. To like whatever you want. <laughs> like, I want Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Turn left I now, I, you mother... <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool right on you know. on my phone i've got automations set for if i get down to i think it's 25 or 16 percent power ah. on my phone you can set a, a voice to talk to you and it so i have mine it's in an irish accent and i slowed it down a little so it's like please plug me in i'm dying over <laughs> here and then when i plug it in every single time i plug it in yeah. it says Thanks, Dina. You spoil me. Aww. Aww. I love that. <laughs> it's See, really fun. I think those override the pet peeves that we have. I think it does. It definitely it does. does. It okay. Does. Do you have do you have any more? Because I got more. You have more? Um pet peeves. You know, there's always like the usual ones that people have of like, oh, don't roll the toilet the toilet. Don't roll the toothpaste this way and don't load oh. the dishwasher wrong and and all those but it's like that stuff doesn't really bother me you know even like the toilet paper it bothers me a little bit but i'm just like you know at least just throw something on there and you're not gonna it. die on that hill but i'm like because i'll change it anyway <laughs> i change it even at other people's houses <laughs> oh my like, god <laughs> okay a pet peeve because i do cleaning um you know, as my day job, as the day job, this is my, my moonlighting job. Um, so, <clears throat> okay, y'all, I, I love everyone to pieces, but just when a cleaner's coming to your house, if you could just be so kind <laughs> to just take a little bit of stuff off your counters, <laughs> off your vanities, off your dressers, whatnot. Um, cause you know, we want to clean right to the back of those backsplashes. Like, just give us a, a little help. <laughs> just, yep. you know, you can put all your little mini appliances back on there after. I don't care. But now there's a there's a twofold to this because some mini appliances do need to be wiped off, like toasters and, you know, I mean, don't put your microwave away, obviously. But, you know, some people have toasters and, you know, they're blenders and they're ninjas. The comforter and they're, on the bed, there's like this big lump. You're like, what the heck's in here? And you're, it's like, it's the microwave. <laughs> Yo, your microwave is in the <laughs> Your deep fryer is in the bedroom. <laughs> but I'm just saying, okay, maybe rotate your appliances. <laughs> Leave it your, you know... Deep fryer one week, the next week, put out a toaster and a blender. I'll happily do it. No problem. But just like, you know, but most of my clients are really good. I think they kind of have come to realization that I'm just like, I will thoroughly clean it and, I, and it will be so spotless, but just, you know, and I'm saying like, I had clients in the past, past, like way back years where it was like, there's so much stuff. And I'm just like, I understand people get busy and it's not easy to do. However, I want to do a good job. I want it to be nice and, you know, sanitized and everything. And I want them to go home and, and be like, oh, my countertop is just sparkling, you know, and it's so just a little less, a little less stuff than, you know, and 
kids, it's hard, but just throw everything on their bed. I so I can vacuum the floor. That's all I gotta say. Just air fryer, microwave, throw it on the bed. Let's go. <laughs> what's the Carrie? What's the worst thing that you've ever found left on a counter in the kitchen? So it might the be thing? like like the worst. Like was it something like dirty underwear, clothes, mm -hmm. or, or food that's been there looks like six days, um, a dead food. cat. I don't know what a dead cat. Um, a lot of food, oh, like just yeah. rotten food or that's just been left a couple days or whatever. And I'm just like, you know, and yeah, just put all your stuff in the garbage. It takes two seconds. Um, <clears throat> some people, like I understand maybe it was the morning of, and it's like, I gotta get out the door. I'm going to be late for yeah. work, whatever. I get that. But when it's like a week old, yeah, you guys like, you know, um, have that respect for your cleaners because they put in a lot of work and you know it's not just a quick wipe of the countertops i mean we're talking like we wipe inside your microwaves around appliances we do your fridge i in my um <clears throat> defense i have a lot of my clients have stainless steel appliances so they got the, like the double door fridges great love them so i open them up and i do like the inside of the like the yep. fridge door just like the edge yep. and then the other edge because when you close them and you open it like you can see all mm -hmm. that stuff along there right and then i always do like the handles and then i open up the freezer because a lot of them are the bottom freezers open yep. that up just to along the edge on the top and then i do inside the seal just like because yep. a lot of crumbs get in there so mm -hmm. you know that's one thing because things fall in there all the time and then you get like juice and whatever like that so that's another pet peeve too cleaning fridges is like i don't mind it but when there's stuff just in everything i'm like yo just yeah. when it falls just paper towel just you know easy whatever like until it's dried out and <laughs> caked on there and it's and now now that dried right. juice is like glue and all the crumbs have stuck in it and yeah <laughs> i love it i just it's my favorite. <laughs> Absolute just <laughs> like okay. you know. Yeah. Okay. I'll do another. Um and those of you who are watching, thank you for tuning in. We got some uh fabulous comments in here. So oh, good. So yeah, just TV, thank you for watching because we are we are live through the Just TV yes. Facebook page, the Underground Radio C Facebook page. I am also live on my LinkedIn. So all y'all on LinkedIn, hey guys, put in the comment. Uh, your comment, your pet peeves. Today we're talking pet peeves um, because it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. And and we're doing it clean cut. We are so proud yeah. of ourselves. Cause because our last show, we, yourself. yeah. Our last show, we did it uncentered, uncensored. Unfiltered, uncensored. <laughs> I said un uncentered. Oh yeah, we're a little uncentered. We're a little off, we're a little off center too. That's Can okay. It. It's a real shift show. <laughs> it's um, real shift. I have a few. And I'm just going to mention and um, we'll and pick one. And we should go over how how we can kind of change these things, our yes. perspectives, I think. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay. We kind of we kind of have, a a, but yeah, we could dig, dig in a little deeper. So one is hangovers. Why do people why why do people have more than one in their life? Like I like to drink. I mean, I said I brought my probably Malibu in my OJ today and you go but there. the hangovers how can you have more than two in a lifetime i don't because they aren't fun from what it looks like they they just they aren't fun and and yet they know what ha what causes it but in that moment i think people just forget that, right yeah and so when you have something planned and somebody has a hangover and now they now they're no fun you're just like really dude or do that it could be either. Um, and then, so that there's that. There's people who don't untie their shoes to shove their feet in and pull them out, <laughs> whatever. Um, there's finger, so fingernails, super long fingernails and, and everything, like they can't do stuff. It's like a handicap. And mm -hmm. wet nail polish, I, my own purse, I hate. And I don't, I've tried gel nails once, but they wreck, for me, they wrecked my nails. They were hard to get that off. I'm not in for, down for that. And I know that they would dry quicker. Yeah. But the only time I feel completely incapacitated and it it really does annoy 
me is if I want to have some nice fingernails, I'm going to have to put up with that drying time. <laughs> I know. Right, la right, ladies, tell me I am so, not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I've there's been many, many times that I go on a road trip and the last thing I do is I walk out the door. I've got everything lined up so I can paint my nails and they, it dries while I'm driving. Oh, that's clever. I heard one lady who'll paint one hand at a time. So she always has one hand that she can use. Yeah, I no, I do. <laughs> uh, so, okay, I got a manicure done years back and I kept like the little foamy things that they stick in between your toes. Yeah. And so <laughs> I was like, why did we do that? Okay. So, yes. <laughs> can you tell I just painted my toenails today? <laughs> I kept it because I thought they're so cool. And yeah. so I put that on and I do my toenails first. And then so you're walking like on your heels yeah. <laughs> around your house and you're like, because <laughs> <laughs> I do my toes first and then I do like my, my bad hand first. And then I yeah. do my good hand last <laughs> like because of process. Right. So then yeah. I, I do that. And then I'm like, yeah, walking around on my heels. If I have to go around the house doing something and then I'm like, Grab, I'm like grabbing cups. I'm like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like I try and yeah, do like the whole, you know, dry time. Let's go put on the fans and I'm like holding them against the fan. I'm like, <laughs> well, or go sit in the sun or something. I, I found out, saw a really good meme one time and I can't exactly remember how it said, but it was something about you can, women are unstoppable, fearless and undefeatable unless we have wet nails. Right. <laughs> and then we're like, uh, can you just hold that? Can you hold everything? I just yeah yeah. The other thing is tipping. So I was going to research on. this. Is there a perfect time to do our nails? Is there like any time that's good that we can just sit back and like wait wait for them to dry? I think if we other are, than just going out and doing it at no, a salon. No, I think if for me, I try and plan my day so I can feel like I can just go relax, read a book, and just yeah. let them dry while but I'm. You can't read a book with your well, if you're creative, if you're creative, I don't watch much TV, but that would be a good time. I have done it many times before I went into a Zoom meeting. Oh, what a great idea. Before our show, next time I'm doing it. <laughs> just like With my heels down. I did today. Like... I put the top coat on my. I put the top coat on my toes just before we came live. Like. You go, girl. There you go. Uh, okay. Tipping is another thing. So my daughter, we were saying about, um, and I was going to research this, but she's been yeah. in Europe far more recently than I have. And she said that's it's not really a thing in Europe. So yeah. it's just like it's awkward. You don't understand. Is it expected? And it bugs me that if we are expected to supplement wages, why aren't they just paid better in the first place? Or, you know, whatever. Or anyways, so those are my, that's kind of the rest of my list. But what else on tipping though? So there was hangovers, wet, <laughs> wet nails, long nails, and tipping. Okay. I want to go more. We can just throw tipping. it out there and people can comment. True. Um, but I want to know more about tipping uh, because what I find a little bit pet peevish is that We should have the option to tip, I think, like quite honestly, because if you get, and there are places where like, that's all there, like it's required to pay a tip. And it's like, I don't think people should pay a tip if there was no service. Like I could walk into um, like Edo and it's right on their pin pad. It's like, okay, how much for a tip do you want to, and I'm just like, so because you bagged my food, you deserve a tip or whatever. I'm like, I would love, I love table service. I love come over. If you're great service, you're pouring coffee, you're doing this, you're bringing your food, you're, you're funny, you're whatever. I want to give you a good tip. I don't want to just be like, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, they're working. They are literally working. Like yeah. they are running to the kitchen. They're getting things. They're coming back. They are, you know, working for that tip. So when I see the tip thing come up and it's like, oh yeah, okay, 15, 10, I think it's 10. 10, 15 or 20 or whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, I have my throat is so dry. Another pet peeve of Alberta. Um, 
I want to give more of a tip because they are working yeah. more than just like I said, just begging something. And I'm just like, yeah, you deserve more of a tip. But I think like, you know, that is a is a big pet peeve. It's like, why do I need to tip you when? Yeah, yeah, you're not I agree. It's like it you're getting be, your salary already, and yeah, you know, it should be yeah. optional for something that you know they've gone above and like they've made it a very nice experience or you just you it's an option but i've been at restaurants where i i go to put my credit card and make the payment and then i said oh well where's where's the tip option and they're like oh we already added 18 percent tip oh yeah yeah i was like what can you take that off no, too late. We, uh, oh, that's going to be such a hassle. And then they make it a huge hassle and you're fine. Like, fine, just leave yeah. it on there. I have to get somewhere. I think they do that on purpose so that yeah. they do get that without your, you knowing. And I think like, it's almost like, um, radar traps, photo radar traps. <laughs> like we had done it over with and you're like, well, excuse me, like, yeah. you know, they're tricking you into it. And it's like, no, um that's entrapment and so it's the same with tipping like give us the option to do it and i want to see more servers putting in that effort whatever and and i understand some people really don't like their job and they don't want to be going there but some people it's the only time they get out and it's they really want to just enjoy an experience so i know it's above and beyond for some people to be happy and put on a happy face and whatever but it's like just doing that little bit extra will actually get you more money. It will, you know, <clears throat> same with like cleaning and whatever. Some days there are, I'm just like, I don't want to clean. I don't want to be there or whatever. If I know, like just in the past, like I said, I had clients that it was just like more specifically one client that was very, very messy all the time. It was like, they didn't clean until I got there every two weeks. So <clears throat> I was like, okay, I'm going to go and I know what to expect. I'm like, that's fine. I'll just go in. It's okay. And then sometimes I would get an extra tip because I'm doing extra or whatever. And I'm like, okay. And because I want people to enjoy the service and be like, okay, I'm offering this for you and I'm doing above and beyond because I care and I want to see your house clean and I respect the space and I want my clients to be happy because that makes me happy in return. It's just one of those services that, I mean, I love it, you know? And to me, it's like, uh, it's a God-given talent and I'm like, I'm happy to use it for people that are, you know, worthy of it, right? That's what I think. So serving tipping... and doing those things, yeah. Like just, you know, bring it on, bring the service, bring the smiles, bring the fun, let's go and I'll give you more money. <laughs> exactly. Some places also, it doesn't matter if you've been the top server and, and you're just putting in that effort and others aren't. Some yeah. places make you split everybody's supposed to drop their tips and everybody they all split it and that feels unfair yeah yeah Yeah. like i understand sometimes they'll share like maybe there's a cook that doesn't have like they're not going to get a tip so share with them but if it's other servers bartender like everybody had an opportunity to make their own tips Mm -hmm. they've earned that and i think they should earn be able to keep that and it is sad that it many times it does supplement their income it is, it can be tax free if they don't claim it. And mm-hmm. it, so there's a few things. So that's around the yeah. tips. Um, so then there's okay. the hangovers and wet nails and long nails. I don't know if we want to take time to go over anything there. I think we kind of talked about. Yeah, hangovers. Um, so what is it about the hangovers? Just the fact that it's buzzy? <laughs> well, because people What's the because pet peeve about it? Is it the, the people that is- get hangovers? Or is it you having a hangover? Oh, no, I don't think I've ever had one. Um, And and I know that sounds like craziness, but I don't, I drink a lot of water. It it bugs me that people, how, how come they keep having them? Because they know what causes them. It, they lose another day and there's other people that count on them. Mm. And now, or whatever, they whine about it or uh, some people call in sick or they've they've got plans with family or friends and well now they're hung over you're just like you know what I have zero sympathy for you you know what causes it I you know in the moment when you probably knew you should slow down or quit so you didn't have this hangover the next day 
but you just ignore that because you were like, no, I'm having way too much fun. And then they're hungover. <laughs> I don't under like I say, yeah. yes. So, okay. People have more than one, people have more than one child. I've had more than one child that had consequences. I know what caused it. I know that it was, <laughs> are you I sure? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty, I think I haven't figured out, but, okay. but there's a great result. You know, that it's going to be, there's going to be this little tough time and you're going to yeah. get through that. But hangovers, why would you end up, why would you have more than one in your lifetime? Because you're out with your buddies and your buddies are having a good time. And you're like, hey, I have another one. Oh, they exactly, buy you yeah. drinks. They buy you drinks yeah. too, right? They're like, hey, do shots because we had a kid. Hey. Yeah, right. So <clears throat> it's um, personal choice Yeah. at that point, um, what you're doing. And then, you know, and honestly, if you have to work the next day, you have responsibilities. And yeah, I mean, then don't drink or drink responsibly have one or two and, and whatever, you know, that's how I see it or have your few drinks, whatever. And then by the end of the night, start drinking water and eating and then yeah. have like oh, yeah. your Tylenol and your water and your beer beside your bedside in the morning, whatever. But well, I tried to, I tried to think of something I that I could do with. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to think of something I could throw in that could be a little controversial, you know, get some, get some yeah. talk going around it yeah. because I've, I more than once, I, I think it's three times from the time I was like 15 mm -hmm. and I'm almost 60 now. I'm like 58, three times. I think in my lifetime, I've drank to the point where I've thrown up and oh. I, I, you know, yeah. so I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. And that's probably why I didn't have a three hangovers in my life because yeah. I did throw up, but yeah. So, you know, we all learn, we all make choices, whatever, but I was like, I want to get some conversation going. Get some people going. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know the whole drinking thing too. I'm just, I'm one of those persons, like I can't go to the bar and just drink. Like for me, it's like, if I'm going out for dinner, then I'll have a nice casual drink or you know, if I have a nice little dinner at home, I have like a little bit of wine, but it's like never more than two Bellinis at Joey's. Like I can't, because <laughs> yeah. for me also with the heat and stuff too, like it'll hit me a lot easier just because it's like hot. So I tend not to actually drink when it's so hot outside because I'm just like, it'll time me over. I'll just want to sleep. And I'm like, that's no yeah. good. So yeah. Well, paint your nails really before fun. you have a nap. Okay. have a glass of wine paint your nails Wait, why would i paint like... them before i nap what if i fall asleep and i'm just like oh <laughs> oh the because other thing you can the, dry. the pet peeve with painting my nails i do it so nice and then all of a sudden i touch something and then it goes Bleh. and you can never fix that blue spot like oh. you have to take it off and even if you do it like it doesn't come out the same ever like no no this is Men, this is a problem. <laughs> Fix it for ladies, please. I know there's <laughs> lots of times that I'll be doing my makeup or something, and yeah. and Kyle's like, "So what's that? St which what is that stuff for?" And I'll say, and he goes, "I'm so happy I'm not a girl." <laughs> right. <sighs> the men just don't understand. You know, actually, there are guys that do paint their nails. I, you know, yep. I, I've seen like punk rockers and other like nowadays. It's more uh, you see it more. So I mean. Maybe they do understand. And usually their choice of paint color is black. And so brave. That's so brave. <laughs> I just, I've done black. I, I would be like, if I got it on a shirt, I would be crying. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see that. So yeah. did you want to go back over any of these and try and shift how we, which, Shifting, which ones? Um, we could shift the, the alcohol. And um, what else do you think? I don't know. I think we both agreed on the toilet paper thing and just yeah. had a laugh about that. The reading material, same thing. And um, Zoom. Technology. technology. Oh, yeah. We could. Uh, like you know, how, you how mentioned, I think that? there's nothing we can really do to solve that. It, it's just, oh, you I have think a laugh being grateful it. and remembering. We had a laugh. But even remembering what dial-up was like and how, you know, let's just, it's first world. Let's appreciate what we do have. Yeah. So that's yeah. a shift. Yeah. Um, you mentioned drivers. So I don't know. One thing I heard Please. from a lady, she's a coach around mindset. Yes. And she does a thing in traffic that I have done myself many times. 
especially, and I try and do it when I'm frustrated. Just turn it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that works too, but no, actually I was getting like, I was, I would, I, I speed. And so I found one day I'm, I also do Reiki. I'm a Reiki master and I had a Reiki playlist on and I jumped in my vehicle to go somewhere. And that's what my Bluetooth picked up. And my driving was different. Oh. I was like, doo, doo, doo. I wasn't in such a rush, <laughs> whatever. But anyways, this cool. lady said what she'll do. And I've tried it when I'm frustrated in traffic, but more it's easier to do when you're not frustrated is she'll just send out love to the other drivers. And oh, just like, man. you know what? Mm-hmm. I don't know what you're dealing with in your day. I, I hope okay. you arrive safely. And all my life, when I see sirens, in my mind, I'll do a little message like, please protect them. Please, yeah. please be with them. Please watch over the people they're helping and the people that are that you're helping. Yeah. Or, but yeah, just sending that. Yeah. Just send, you know, it, call it's it true. love, you call it yeah. abundance, call it white light, call it whatever. And it's like, I don't know what you're dealing with in your life right now. Yeah. Or if it's good or whatever, but I'm just sending out good vibes and, and stay yeah. in your lane. Yeah. And stay in your lane. <laughs> Yo, well, that's the next bumper sticker. You stay in your lane. But it's true because I mean, like I, I'm in Calgary, there's Deerfoot, Glenmore, the two biggest roads. And oftentimes winter time, well, actually summer, both, you know, you get major accidents and you're just like, yeah, people get mad because it's like, oh, I'm late for work. And it's all about them. But when you turn around, you go, someone might have lost a loved one. They could have lost their child. They could have lost whatever. And like, that's horrible, right? So I think we have to have a little bit more empathy for these people that are, you know, going through that and just have some patience and go, okay, well, I want to make it to work today, right? I don't want to be another victim of that. So, and especially like being in an accident myself, I mean, the people that hit me, luckily like they were all fine and that was the one thing like i stopped and i was like because they had um i know there was one child at least in the car but they were fine and i was like okay because it was just myself in my car i didn't have anybody with me i was on my way to work and i was like you know they're fine and there was like a crack on their front bender whatever and i'm just like okay like because to me other people's lives are so important then you know, then all this other stuff we deal with every day. So yeah. even though it can be annoying, it can be, oh, hold you up this much time whenever and you're all oh, going to be late. And yeah, you know what? There's another hundred people on Deerfoot. They're going to be late too. And chances are it's going to be on the news or it's going to be on the radio and your boss is going to know that you're going to be late. So your boss might be in traffic too and they're late. So just the overall picture, I think, We have because now like it's we're getting into August tomorrow. And so it's like, well, you know, winter's coming. So let's all go into it with better mindset, I think, for sure. So yeah. Good. I think that's that's good. So Pepe's, I think we did good with our our sensor, uncensored. Our clean cut, cut. unfiltered. Yeah. We did good. (laughs) I'm so proud of us. It's the Well, yeah, I mean, it could go worse. So um, with that, yeah, if you guys have um, any pet peeves we want to hear about them, you can even do a little little video. You can tag us, yeah. um, Underground Radio, See Life Changes in Divorce Magazine. You can tag Jess FM and, uh, or Jess TV. You can slap it on your social media and do a little video of, like, what bugs you. And maybe we'll have you on and we can talk about it. It might be really fun. And uh, we might make fun of you. It would be great. Like whatever you want to do. <laughs> we'll laugh with you. <laughs> Not at you, but with you, because that's the important thing is that we all love each other. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, so with that, Dina, we can close out the show and uh then we'll be back in two weeks. Yes. Yeah. Woo. So what do we want to talk about? <laughs> People can send us some suggestions. Yeah. Uh you can find us on all the socials, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, on uh uh, dinacourt.com as well as on divorcemagazinecanada.com I have a podcast that's on all the players called Life Changes Channel so tune in and and give us some feedback give us mm-hmm. some suggestions what you'd like to hear or, or let's let's get some conversations going around what we've been talking about yeah absolutely make sure you guys subscribe and go to underground radio see you can find all of my shows there and you'll hear 
our this show is going to be there live and then my connect with carrie shows are there too um if you want to be a guest on our shows contact us as well and, and we'll have a little chat and see if you fit for the show and with that we hope you guys have a great shifty rest of your day and <laughs> i guess we'll see you in two weeks wishing you some amazing shift in your life amazing shifts guys good night